Welcome to the second tutorial in beginning Java. Uh, today we're going to talk about variables and a variable is basically a think of it as a way the computer remembers something as it runs your program. Um, now there are two ways to define a variable basic, or two ways that are, they're created and um, basically you have to use the name you have to name the variable and you also have to give um, the type of information that that variable will store. So those are the two main things. But just think of it as a way that you store information. That's, that's the most important concept to understand about variables. So we're going to create, actually this program was uh, the first program we did in the first tutorial, but we're going to create a new one now. Okay, so let's create a new program here to, to show you variables. Empty Java file. We will call this testing variables, and I'll cut and paste this. So, the, and of course, again, the class name should match what you call the program, which is testing variables.java. Again, once again, a variable is a simple way to store data for your program. It's a way for your program. Think of it as a way for your program to remember. It, it almost gives it a memory bank, a way to remember values. So there's two, two things you have to do with a variable. First, you have to declare it, and you have to tell it what type it is. In this case, we're going to use int. We're going to declare this as an int variable. That's a whole number, so like 6, 7, 8, 9. There's also several different ways you can do doubles, which are decimal points, and I'll show you that in a little bit. But we're just going to call this an int. Then you have to give it a variable name. You have to tell Java what the name is. And then you can refer to this variable later on as just touchdown. So in this case, we're going to call this touchdown. We're going to use semicolon. And now you have to assign it a value. And so we're going to refer to the variable name that we just defined. We're going to use an operator here called equals. Equals is an operator where we actually tell it what touchdown is equal to. And in this case, in college football and in the NFL, it's equal to six points. So we hit semicolon again. So to review really quickly, here we, we declare this as an int. We gave it the name of touchdown, and then we, in the second, in line four here, we assigned it a value with the equals operator, and we gave that six, okay? Okay, so let's print this variable out. This is going to be very similar to what we did in the first tutorial. We're just going to do a system.out.print, so we can just go ahead and copy and paste this into testing variables, our testing variables program. This time we're going to just print out the variable and all you have to do between these open paren parenthesis is just put in the variable name. And then we're going to go ahead and run the file and we should get some output here. And we got six right there. That's the output. Now like I said we can also um, we can also use decimal points here. And to do that we would call this double. So this is how we would, we would refer to this as a double. That's the parameter we'd use. And now we can add uh, numbers to the right and left of the decimal points. So we'll just say it's 6.5. Now we know that's not true in the NFL and college football, but for testing purposes, it will be. And so now we can use a decimal point. We'll go ahead and run this again. You see here we get 6.5 this time. Now the other type of variable type that stores decimals is the float variable type. So if we put that in here and there's the, the main difference here is that the float variable type holds 38 figures and the double type holds up to 300 figures. So moving along, you'll deal with several different types of variables. So far, we have just been dealing with numeric variables, but there are many other different types of variables. The other big variable types are characters and string. You can define a character, just like a single letter, or you can do a string which has like a group of characters. So to define a character, we need to use the keyword chr, and that needs no explanation, for, obviously it's for a character. We're going to give this a variable name of letter, and then we're going to use the equals operand, and we're going to assign this the letter L. That's what, we're, that's what will be the value. 
the letter L. Actually, we have to use single quotes. The reason we use single quotes is so that Java does not think that this, we're actually defining a variable name here. This tells it that it's not a variable name, it's the character L. And so now we already, obviously, we can get rid of this line four as well. And in touch, uh, for the touchdown variable name, we'll replace that with the variable name that we just defined on line three. Now we can go ahead and run the file and you see we get the letter L now. In addition, you can also do, we're not gonna do this here, but you can also define single numbers, punctuation marks, and symbols. Now let's move on to string variables. So we will define a, or use the keyword string. You guessed it, string. Actually, it should be in caps, the first letter. String, and we will define the variable name as sentence. And we will say, this is a sentence. And we'll change the letter variable name to what we defined above to sentence. Oh, and one more thing. Uh, we do not, for a string, we do not use a single quote. We use the double quote. So that's why we're getting the IntelliSense warning. And so let's run this program. And we get the sentence, this is a sentence. So that's it for character and string variables. The other variable type that is used quite often is the Boolean variable. That only has two values, true or false. So I'll show you that quickly here. Again, you're going to use the Boolean, whoops, we're spelling that wrong, Boolean keyword. We're going to just call this home run equals false. And then you could also put the other value in there, true. You will notice that if we try to put something other than true or false, like one, two, three, you get IntelliSense warning saying you, that cannot be converted to Boolean. But if you put true or false in there, it's fine. So that's it for Boolean, that's pretty simple. I wanna spend a moment talking about how to name your variables appropriately. First consideration is you wanna give your variable name a relevant name that describes its purpose. You don't wanna, for instance, if this is about home runs, you don't wanna call this base hits. That may be useful to you, but later on, somebody else is working on the same project, you will confuse them. So if it's about home runs, you should use home runs. The other point I'd like to make is that variable names are case sensitive in Java. So if I call this home runs and I capitalize the R and then I go down here to uh, where we're printing this out and use the variable name home runs, you can see you get an IntelliSense. They don't match up. So they are case sensitive. So if I capitalize the R, there it is. They match up and Java will run this. While we're on the subject of capitalization, if your variable name has multiple words, the first letter of each new word should have a capital letter, but not the first word in a variable. So if I say all time leaders, I should leave the A uncapitalized, but capitalize the T and then capitalize the L in leaders. Whoops. all-time leaders. That's the naming uh, convention that you should use for variables. One final point I'd like to make is you cannot use spaces be, uh, in your variable. So I can't go or hyphen. So I can't go space, hyphen. That's not going to work. You have to get rid of that. There can, there can be no spaces. Now if you want to, if you need a space, you can use underscore. That will, that's fine. But you cannot put in spaces. So that is it for variables. We will move on to the next tutorial and have a good day.